So just the other day ago, there was a release called Collateral Damage. And what this was, was it was a kernel exploit for Xbox System OS. Now, the exploit author went ahead and released a sample that a number of us could play with. And that was simply a version that required you to have Advanced File Explorer, the full trust, already installed on your xbox now a ton of us had it installed but through either licensing problems or other strange hiccups those apps didn't necessarily run which meant that most of us have been waiting for a network-based solution where you wouldn't need that app now that version came right here right around two days ago and that is what i want to focus today's video on now, before we go any further, or if you want to follow my tutorial, do keep in mind you will need an Xbox that already has the game script application installed. For the majority of us, you'll probably be setting this one out. Don't worry, I'll at least give you a taste of what it looked like. Well, I'm not going to describe the project. I believe that's been covered multiple times here. So to begin with, let's just go ahead and download this zip file right here. And then... We're going to come over to this GitHub site and we are just going to select right here and then download the zip. This is basically going to give us access to Netcat, which is what we're going to need for the reverse shell. So I have went ahead and I have extracted both of those zip files. So this one right here is obviously collateral damage and this one is the Netcat application. Let's just go ahead and come right here and type in CMD and then press return and you'll see this just pop up and we are just inside of this folder right here which contains our netcat64 and then over here let me describe a few of these files now the very first one is the game script network file so if we open this so once you open this you will see that right here is where you're going to need to put in the IP address of your PC. Now, the number that you put in here is obviously going to vary dependent on how you set up your network. In my instance, I'm using a simple ESP32 device, and I'm basically just on a Wi-Fi network, just my PC and my Xbox One. Now, this doesn't have outside access to the internet or anything. It's just you need a way to put both your PC and your Xbox on the same network. It doesn't have access to public internet. And the reason for this is, is that if you try to connect your Xbox up to the internet, well, the very first thing you'll see is it begging you to update to the latest version of Xbox. So again, for my instance, this is my IP to my computer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save it, and then we'll close back out of it. Now, the next file is for those that may be using something like the Rubber Ducky. Now, there's a ton of different ways that you can set up one of these from one of these smaller Raspberry Pi Pico devices, but I'm going to use the application called Notepad T. Again, there's lots of requirements for this exploit where most of you may just want to kind of watch this one from the sidelines. This file right here is an executable that you'll run in a command prompt that will pass it off to this stage2.bin and then run.execute, which will spawn the reverse shell. So go ahead again and come up here and type in CMD. And so now if you're following along, you will want to take your game script autosave network.txt file and then put that onto a USB drive. Now let's take that drive out and let's put that inside of our Xbox. Okay, so back on our Xbox here, I'm going to select Notepad T here and I'm going to go up to this menu item and we're going to select Open File and right there is our USB and there is my file and then we're going to go to Select All. And then we're going to come right back up here and we are going to go to where it says copy. Okay, we can go ahead and close back out of this application and we will go into the game script application. Okay, so once this loads, if you use your right gamepad, 
then you can select the existing text that was in there. Now, you could also hook up a physical keyboard and then select all the text and delete it from there. Anyway, there's a number of ways to kind of clear this out. Once you do that, you will want to come back up here and take the option to paste code since we currently have that in our clipboard. And then once that code has been pasted, we're going to hold down the X button and we're going to use the left analog stick to move this around. And we're going to hold down the X button again. And we are going to select the left button to go to window. And we are going to open up this window right here, which is called show code run window. We're going to scroll down right here to run code once and do not press anything. We're going to finish setting up a few things on our PC. Okay, so back over on the PC, we need to go ahead and run those commands. So following the instructions here, we're going to select this right here and we're going to go ahead and copy that. And if you have your window still set up like I just had it, you're going to want to come back over here to this window and you are going to want to paste that in and then press the enter button. You will get this pop up here. Make sure you select allow. And then for the netcat, we need to select this right here. And then we're going to copy that and then come back over here and we are going to paste it. We will also need to select allow here and it should say listening on 77. And now both of these should be sitting there on listening. And we're going to go ahead and press A now. And it will appear like that machine is frozen up. And if you switch back to your PC, you should see now that it has finished processing. Now, I got lucky in this instance where it ran immediately, but I've had other times where I've had to attempt it five times, ten times, and even more. But this is what it looks like once you are successful. It will drop you into the S drive on your Xbox One. Okay, so here is the Xbox One, and by default, it automatically just goes to the S drive. I did a directory listing right here, and you can see there's all of these folders in here. So I could go into maybe apps here. So we'll go into apps. Uh, there's nothing in there. We'll just go into the Microsoft folder and do a directory listing there. So anyway, still more to come with this project. Now, I've got additional content that's over on my X account if you want to see what it kind of looks like to play around with that file system. But I wanted just to make this kind of quick video to kind of give you an overview of where we're at today. And according to the project page, there's a bunch of more stuff coming in the future. Thanks so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael.